Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about the free versus causal and unconscious will responses to economic downturns. Okay, um, before we do that, I kind of like want to go through why I'm doing the show and go through a brief explanation of what we mean by free will and why, you know, in various ways it, it's simply impossible. Okay. Um, basically, as, as um, in our personal lives, in, our, in the lives of our world, this belief in free will causes harm. It, um, it creates competition, hostility, aggression, um, blaming, self-blame, you know, the pain of guilt. Um, from a different perspective, it's just like, in a certain sense, it's, it's insane. It's just like, it's so wrong. It's so refuted by reason, by logic, by science. Um, and so we've got our whole world kind of like, you know, just like completely deluded about something as fundamental as the nature of human will. So basically what I'm trying to do is um, get us on track on this, just like, and, and my prediction is that to the extent that the world wakes up to our causal will, you know, to our unconscious will, the fact that free will is an illusion, then I think we can create a, a much better world. Um, okay, um, just briefly, you know, if you want to see this show again, um, if you want to see other episodes, I've got about, um, about 28 up there now, um, go to causalconsciousness.com. Or if you Google exploring the illusion of free will, you know, that it, you know, yeah, it should take you there, you know, the first, first site, first, um, first entry there. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to just go briefly through the reasons why free will is impossible and then get right into our, our topic, which is really about the economy, um, our response to it. Um, okay. Everything has a cause. Nothing can happen that's uncaused. So if everything has a cause, that means all of our decisions have causes, have a cause. Okay, so what happens is, let's say, take any decision. You have a decision, it has a cause. Then that cause has a cause. Then that cause of the cause has a cause. And what you see is we have a causal regression, cause and effect, you know, going back from the decision to its cause, to its previous cause, back in time, this chain of causation that stretches back before we were born. Okay, that's one way to understand why free will is an illusion. The second way is that um, the material, the data, the memories that we base our every decision on or that take part in every decision um, are stored at the level of our unconscious. And that's, it's simple to understand because we couldn't keep all that information you know, in mind, in our conscious mind, moment to moment. Our, you know, our conscious mind can only just um, be conscious of a small amount of that information. So that's the second way. The third way is, that, um, I just did a show on this, Galen Strawson's Nothing Can Be Cause a Sui argument, that if we didn't create ourselves, and obviously we didn't. We can't be held responsible for what we do, you know, even though we may choose to assume responsibility to um, make our lives, you know, better in certain ways. Um, but if we didn't create ourselves, obviously that means we're not responsible, meaning that we don't have free will. And I guess maybe the last way, um, there may be a few other ways, but um, just that, um, think about it, um, from, from your experience, um, we are hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain. And the average level of happiness here in the United States is about 70%. Um, so that, you know, we're generally happy, but we're not nearly as happy as most of us would want to be. And so if we had a free will, we would be, because our thoughts, our feelings, our states, our moods, you know, our happiness would be up to us. All right, so let's get to this, um, to this topic. Um, the New York, State, New York Stock Exchange lost about 600 points yesterday. Um, I think it was like a 5% loss. 
I think today it's doing better, but I th over the last couple of weeks, it's lost about 10% of its value. People are afraid that um, these are um, indicators that we're going into a, a second recession. And um, now, you know, I'm taping this um, in early August, August 9th, I believe. And it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, air early September or mid-September, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, God willing, um, we, we're not going into another recession. But, um, but what this episode is about is how understanding that our wills are causal or unconscious or just simply not up to us, that free will is an illusion, can help us um, deal with the challenges that, um, that we're facing from the 2008 global economic meltdown um, and that, that we may, you know, God willing, won't, but um, may have to um, deal with in the future. And I mean, it's not just about the economy, but this is what I'm going to focus on. You know, it's, it's kind of like get you um, honed in on, on how this topic just affects one issue. All right, so let's get to um, the analysis. Um, the free will perspective. If we, have, if we believe that we have a free will and other people have free will, we are going to blame politicians for being either inept or corrupt or not caring. You know, we're going to blame them for the state of our economy. They should have known better. Um, we're going to blame the rich for being too greedy, too selfish, too callous, maybe too incompetent also. Corporations. We're going to blame the people we feel maybe created the, the economic hardships we're going through, the recessions, or, um, or just, um, just kind of like took advantage of them in some way. I mean, it's... Um, in, in addition to, to blaming, you know, politicians and corporations and, you know, the, the people on our planet that, um, that have power over money, we, we would also blame ourselves. The free will perspective says, oh, wow, you know, I, um, I should have been wiser, I should have been better, I should have not invested so um, carelessly, I should have gotten... Um, a job that's re recession proof. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't, you know, all these kinds of like things that, um, that we might have done or are doing that aren't kind of in sync with, um, with our economy right now. And, um, and naturally, you know, it's also like about blaming our friends, our associates, family members who may have like, you know, bought a house that they couldn't afford or, um, or invested too much of their life savings, their children's um, education fund in, in what turned out to be not so safe investments. All right. So um, this is the free will perspective. This is what, what happens with when, when we fall prey to the illusion of free will. Um, we blame. Okay, and, um, and blame naturally will lead to conflict, you know. Um, you can see that in your personal lives. Um, when somebody does something wrong, when you just do something wrong, it, it will very often, or um, more often than it should, um, lead to negative emotions, lead to recriminations and accusations and judgments and all that. Um, and this, this is what would happen, you know, um, with our economy. Um, all right, so um, that's not, you know, this seeing what's happening with our, uh, our economy through the lens of free will is fraught with, with problems. Now, let's see um, how this, um, how this, you know, can be dealt with from, from a causal world perspective, from the perspective that no, free will is an illusion and, um, and neither the politicians nor the rich nor we nor our friends nor anyone is really to blame for what's happening. Okay, immediately I think maybe you get it already. Um, if 
nobody's to blame, then um, fine. We, we've got a lot that has to be done with our economy. We've got to, um, you know, probably find a way to re redistribute the wealth more, um, more wisely and more fairly. We have, you know, there's just like, you know, between that and climate change, which is like going to be very intertwined with the economy, there's like a sea change. There's a, a world of change that we have to undergo. And so we'll have those challenges, but to the extent that we can overcome, transcend, not fall prey to this illusion of free will, we can, um, we can undergo these, um, these challenges without <clears throat> the additional challenge of having to rein in these, these um, feelings of blame, these feelings of, of, of accusation, the, the kind of um, competition that, that it leads to. Okay, so again, you know, um, if you have a causal or an unconscious will perspective, you can't blame anyone for anything, especially about you know with the economy. And um, and so I mean, we can we can kind of at this point really only predict what um, how um, how the causal will, unconscious will perspective would would relate to this, but. One thing that, that comes to mind is that, um, for example, under the free will perspective, there are a lot of people in the world, um, politicians and business people, who, who have either made egregious mistakes or just have been corrupt in various ways, um, you know, callous to, to needs of people, just um, greedy, selfish you know, um, deceitful. Um, now, under the free will perspective, which we have now, these people are, you know, in hiding. They're, they're not going to admit to what they did, to what they're doing, to what they, you know, want to do, because to the extent they do that, um, that engenders, um, you know, that that blame and the um, the need for justice, you know, that these people who destroyed our economy need to be punished. They need to be um, they need to be punished for their sins, for their mistakes. And so think about these people, and there are a lot of them. You know, it's um, a lot of business people, a lot of politicians um, that are doing a lot that's wrong. Um, under free will perspective, they're not going to be so willing to, to admit to any of this, you know, but take, you know, consider this under a causal will perspective that we, you know, we as a society are, have overcome this illusion of free will. All of a sudden, you know, um, they can say to themselves, fine, you know, it, it was like, you know, they did things that were wrong and, um, but they don't have to feel responsible. We don't have to hold them responsible. And if they have that level of safety, of, of kind of like um, immunity from wrongful prosecution, because it would, in a sense, be wrong to prosecute them in any way for what wasn't in their control, when we have that perspective, um, yeah, I think a lot of them would be much more willing to be much more candid about what they've done in the past, are doing in the present, and intend to do in the future related to our economy that, that may not be in our best interest so we can understand what's going on and correct it. Um, yeah, that's, um, and now that's not to say, for example, um, you know, through a lot that, that happened with the economy, um, some people have made a lot of money from it, um, have gained. And, um, you know, again, they, we can't hold them responsible. But we can, of course, you know, say, well, if the money was wrongly obtained, wrongly gained, then um, recouping it, um, taking it back, you know, um, may be necessary <clears throat> for the health of the economy, for people's lives, welfare. 
but um, but it wouldn't be done from the perspective of um, of blame and prosecution and indictment and punishment and all this aggression and hostility and competition that that it would um, it would create. Um, so that's you know like I think what I'm trying to present here now is that like understanding that we don't have a free will does not mean that we can't address certain kinds of like unfairnesses that come about because of the uh, illusion of free will. Like, yeah, I'm glad. Um, all right, here's the thing. So on the one hand, we can't blame those responsible for the global economic meltdown, the recessions. You know, there's, there's absolutely no way to logically, reasonably hold them accountable because they don't have a free will. But on the other hand, um, here's, here's another kind of result um, of the belief in free will. Um, when we do something right, the free will perspective um, has us believe that, well, we did something right, we deserve to be rewarded. Um, you know, because we did something right. Um, this, is, this is the foundation of our entire economic system, capitalism. You know, you do something good, you deserve to be rewarded. But here's the thing, just as like with the politicians and business people who created this recession, that it would be wrong, it'd be illogical to blame them, then with People, for example, making millions and millions of dollars in salary and in, you know, in certain other ways, um, it would be equally wrong to, um, to credit them for that. In other words, like they were as equally compelled to do what they did to, um, to kind of like claim that um, extraordinary wealth as, um, as the politicians and and businessmen were compelled in, in, um, in destroying the economy. So yeah, this is kind of like, it's an interesting kind of thing. So in other words, like, you know, one of the um, economic um, implications um, of our not having free will would be that, um, fine, if, if you have people who, um, who are very smart, who are very caring, who, um, who have, you know, these advanced abilities, you know, they can be doctors, they can be entrepreneurs, they can be scientists, they can be whatever, you know, um, because, you know, it makes sense to kind of like have a society that allows people to do what they're best at and that allows society to benefit from giving people that freedom. But, um, again, there's no longer a rationale for, um, for concluding that um, since this person is doing something that's um, very, very worthwhile, that um, it's very wonderful, you know, that that must, or, you know, whatever, just that, because um, in a lot of business practices, it's not actually very worthwhile. It's actually counterproductive, but it's lucrative. But um, the idea is that under the causal will perspective, we, um, there's no justification for anyone on the planet making any more or less than anyone else. You know, and like, I don't know whether that's, I don't think that's communist. I think communism has, um, you know, uh, one of the things, there are various things I think that people objected to with communism. One of them was its military um, ambitions, that they wanted to change the world through force. And, you know, naturally, while sometimes that might be necessary as with our American Revolution, um, you know, hopefully going into the future won't be necessary. We can find more civilized ways. But, um, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. If I had a free will, <laughs> if I had a free will, I would not have lost my train of thought. But, um, yeah, so the idea here is that fairness. Um, to the extent that we overcome our illusion of free will, we can create a more fair 
economic system reality. Oh, yeah, I was getting to the, the with socialism. Okay, because, like, you know, we're a very quote unquote capitalist world now, and capitalism has kind of like um, fueled um, a lot of wealth, you know. And in other words, like 200 years ago, almost everybody on the planet was poor. Now, you know, about a third of us are like much poorer than we, you know, should be, but, you know, over three, four billion of us are, are not really. We have our basic needs, and, and you know, capitalism has been a great engine for that. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, this would be about fairness. This would, this would be about just kind of like understanding that under the free will perspective, not only does it create conditions for blame and hostility and, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, as as our economic pie, be, you know, continues to shrink, and it, you know, unless something happens um, that's not really expected um, really soon, then it, 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 you know, it'll probably continue to sh shrink um, for the next few years. I, you know, I'm just guessing, but to the extent that we have these economic problems, um, it is important that we um, that we get this issue of human will right. It's the difference between fighting and, and cooperating. Um, all right. Um, and yeah, that's the last thing I want to like talk about with this. Is that, like, the free will perspective creates an us versus them kind of um, philosophy. Us versus them meaning other people. You know, we hold other people responsible. We blame them. We become angry with them. We aggress against them and all. And the causal unconscious will perspective shifts that completely. All of a sudden, it's like everybody against this insidious fate that um, first leads us to believe that we're responsible for the, the havoc it wreaks. And, um, and you know, for, for, for just like for what's less than perfect, you know, when, when things are, are challenging, problematic, things create pain, limit happiness, uh, we no longer br blame ourselves and each other. We blame the universe, fate, God. And again, like um, I talked about this in the last show, if we're wise, we may want to not even blame God or the universe because like it's an open question as to whether God or the universe has um, free will. I'd prefer to believe it doesn't, you know, because of the um, the kind of horrible things that um, that have occurred. That you know, if if the universe had a free will, we'd have to blame it for it. Whereas if it doesn't, if God doesn't, then we wouldn't, and that would preserve our relationship with with reality. Okay, all right. I've gone through this enough. We've got about four minutes left, and I'm just going to go through some considerations um, related to this topic of, of human will. Okay, this is a good one. Our feelings and moods <clears throat> determine our decisions. We do not choose feelings and moods. Think about it. Um, our emotions will just come to us. Um, sometimes we can control them. Sometimes, for example, if we're an actor, we can conjure them up. We can act really happy and then become, you know, get in touch with that happy feeling. We can act in a certain way and the feeling will follow. But more often, much more often than not in our lives, these emotions are just kind of like coming from the thoughts we're thinking, the uh, activities we're doing, the people we're with, you know, the. Um, just all these various factors that are constantly changing that you know are not really up to us uh, in any um, in any real sense, um, and so um, and so yeah, if, if these feelings and the thing with feelings, emotions, um, <clears throat> for example, if you're feeling a certain way during a certain time, that's going to affect your behavior. It's absolutely going to you know like walk into a party you know, feeling completely gleeful and joyful and, and, you know, full of fun and then walk into the same party with a morose kind of like attitude, you'll see how, how powerful emotions are in our lives, how powerful they determine both what we 
say and do and what others say and do. All right, that's enough for that. Um, oh, this is very cool. We've got two minutes. Um, thoughts simply come into our minds. You know, we're, from where I'm, I'm saying this stuff, okay, naturally whatever, what I'm saying is coming from my unconscious, okay, because like these sentences that I'm saying, you know, the words or the concepts, the, 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 um, I couldn't hold all this stuff in my conscious mind because the conscious mind, again, only holds what's, what's in a present moment. And so like all these words, these concepts, these ideas that I'm presenting, you know, they, um, they arise from my unconscious. But, but think about this. Think, think about next time you um, are sitting just somewhere and just like, just sit down, close your eyes, kind of like meditate, just like let your mind wander and notice how like a thought will come into your mind, then another thought, then a feeling, then a, a memory, you know. And, and you know, when you, when you say to yourself, where, where did this, you know, these things, these thoughts are just coming from me. I'm not really willing them per se. Then you can understand in, a, in another way um, why free will is impossible. All right. Well, we're running out of time. Got about a minute left. Um, I hope that, um, that you understand that, um, that the illusion of free will does cause um, unnecessary harm in our lives, um, some of it related to um, our global economy, our national economy, um, even, I suppose, our local economy. And to the extent we overcome the illusion of free will, we can um, address our economic challenges in a much more effective and pleasant, less confrontational manner. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the show, and we will be back again to explore um, how free will and causal will perspectives affect other issues in our life and just describe more of why free will is impossible. Okay, thanks.